Josh. Josh, we're on the air right now. Get we're on the air. Get out of here. Hello. Sorry about all that. Uh, welcome to the season three premiere of the Woke is Broke podcast. I am your host, Joshua Stanko, and it is a new year, new season of this show, new location for me, a lot of new stuff going on, a lot of new stuff. Then some not so new stuff going on, namely updates on the economy. Oh, actually, we do have some new stuff. Uh, inflation is way down. Unemployment is way down. The cost of gas way down. Stocks are way up. Uh, everything's doing good, actually. This is awesome. Oh, wait. No, sorry. I had that upside down. Um, no, everything's still awful. I guess that's not very new, but uh, what are you going to do? Don't, don't worry, though. Don't worry. Our societal elites have put their focus where it really matters. Namely, on shaming and exiling Joe Rogan for the great crime of having conversations. Conversations with people he's not allowed to talk to. Discussing things he's not allowed to talk about and having ideas that he's not allowed to have all surrounding a particular illness that I'm not even allowed to specify which one because if I did, I myself would be shamed, exiled, and kicked off of YouTube rather quickly. But what the hell? What the hell? Maybe it's time to just give YouTube the finger. Here's my thoughts on this illness. Here's my thoughts on Complete and utter horse crap. There is no need to <laughs> 70 million children in this country. According to Marty McCary from John Hopkins University. These people have no idea what they are doing. Honest to God. But that is my honest opinion on... Now, time to discuss things we are allowed to talk about. At least for the moment. Anti-Semitism, namely. CNN had an article out titled, As Anti-Semitism Grows, So Does Its Danger to Everyone, Here's How You Can Fight It. Why do I have a feeling that this isn't going to have anything to do with anti-Semitism? Just a hunch. Let's get into it. Vlad Gikayan directs the Anti-Defamation League's programs on anti-Semitism. For him, it's personal. He was born in the Soviet Union where Jew hatred was entrenched in society. But. I was told that Jews are considered white now, and Russians are considered white, and the Anti-Defamation League, who this stooge works for, just recently changed the definition of racism to be the marginalization and or oppression of people of color based on a, so based on a socially constructed racial hierarchy that privileges white people. Well, anti-Jewish hatred must have not been that bad in Russia because everyone's white there. Let's keep reading. Educate yourself and be an advocate. No matter where you live, you can help, as Kakayan points out. You don't need to know any Jews to want to make the world a better place for everyone. The ADL has many educational online programs and resources available. They range from anti-bias training to anti-Semitism education. Those are not the same thing. 
Advocate for others' education and protection. Approach schools and centers of learning about adding programs and curriculums on the Holocaust and anti-Semitism. Echoes and Reflection is an online program that focuses on Holocaust education in the classroom. Tennessee school officials said their vote to ban Holocaust graphic novel Mouse was meant to shelter students from foul language and nudity, but advocates say books like these are important tools in teaching younger generations. All right, I, I gotta stop it right there. The banning of mouse from school. It's not banned. It's still being taught, first off, until they find a substitute. Second of all, mouse is a graphic novel, meaning it's a, a lengthy comic book. There are visual depictions of everything in the book, from nudity to violence to graphic language. Okay, and they decided out in Tennessee that maybe this just isn't appropriate for the eighth grade reading level. Maybe it's more appropriate for 10th grade. And that's the thing, that's the responsibility of the school district out there to decide that crap, right? I read 1984 in my freshman year of high school, right? I wasn't really comfortable reading it. It's a very graphic, very disturbing book. There are other people out there who say Catcher in the Rye is too graphic for people to read. School districts are gonna decide for themselves what crosses the line and what doesn't. Sometimes they need to be held accountable because what they decide doesn't cross the line is absolutely crossing the line when it comes to children as we've gone over the show at length mind you, but they are not banning Holocaust education out in Tennessee because they're replacing Mouse with a, a different book. Okay, that's utterly ridiculous. It's complete and utter horse crap. And so far, this is the only example of uh, whitewashing the Holocaust that they've provided here at CNN in this particular article. But let's keep reading. Let's give them a chance. Stop the spread. This means not just speaking out against hate speech you hear, but reporting what you see on social media. You know, my God, it's a coincidence that I was just talking about 1984, where children and neighbors were encouraged to rat on each other for speaking out in unapproved ways, for using unapproved words, unapproved thoughts, committing thought crimes, right? That's what hate speech is at the end of the day. There is no such thing as hate speech. There is just speech. And to put hate in front of it is to say that there are only things that you can say and things that you are not allowed to say, that we are not going to allow you to say. And conflating that with anti-Semitism is absolutely intentional on this author's part, and it's absolutely intentional on the left's part overall. We'll get into that in just a bit here, but we got to finish this article real quick. The pandemic has fueled a lot of conspiracy theories and several prominent people have compared vaccine requirements or mask mandates to the Holocaust. This type of rhetoric demeans the actual atrocities of the Holocaust. Attempts to minimize through absurd comparisons, to minimize the horror and enormity of the Holocaust are really pernicious, Kaken said. Scholars of genocide have said that the final act of genocide is the denial of the genocide. And here's, the and here's the best part, right here. If you or a loved one experience anti-Semitism, report it immediately. The ADL has an online form where you can report any incidents of anti-Semitism, extremism, bias, bigotry, or hate. None of those things are the same. None of those things are the same. This has nothing to do with anti-Semitism. And they're openly instructing people to report on one another for feeling as, you, as though someone has been biased against you? feeling as though somebody has engaged in what you describe as hate speech, even though that has never been defined, just what that is. Because it has no definition. It's a meaningless term meant to restrict speech, right? And the best part in there is this jackass from the Anti-Defamation League, the Kaken guy, saying that these absurd comparisons, you know, diminish the atrocities of what happened in the Holocaust. It occurs to me that in this article, at no point does it mention Whoopi Goldberg saying that the Holocaust had nothing to do with race. The Holocaust isn't about race. Her co-host seemed taken no. aback. No, it's well, not about maybe race. Maybe yeah. well, yeah. no, it's about a different it's a, race. But it's it's not about race. It's not about what race. What is it about? Because you, it's about man's inhumanity to man. She also That's characterized the slaughter of six million well, Jews well, like yeah, this. This is white people doing it to white people. Yeah. It was a bunch of white people against white people and man's inhumanity against man. Does that not diminish the atrocities of the Holocaust? Does that not diminish the atrocities that occurred at that time? 
It absolutely had everything to do with race. Hitler wanted to advance the Aryan race. He did not see Jews, blacks, cripples, or anyone, gypsies, anyone else as being part of that race. He saw them as an, another race altogether, and he went out and tried to exterminate all of them. It was absolutely 150% about race, and to say that it's not is to give a green light to anti-Semitism everywhere. But they don't care about anti-Semitism. They don't care because they just conflated the term anti-Semitism with to get to what they really care about, which is hate speech, which is just restricting your speech, which is just restricting what you are allowed to think, allowed to say, allowed to believe in your heart, what you are allowed to go out there and practice and preach and, and, and advocate for politically, religiously. Yeah, the conflation uh, of the two is, is just absolutely appalling and absolutely diminishes anti-Semitism and absolutely diminishes the atrocities of the Holocaust and have these hypocrites at the ADL and, and CNN and the, these these wise all-knowing liberals get out there and, and talk about inclusivity and acceptance while you while while simultaneously rewriting history because to recognize that the Holocaust did have something to do with race would diminish Whoopi Goldberg's ability to claim to be a victim Right? It would diminish her ability to point to African Americans and say, this is, the group that, this is the group that's really marginalized, that's what we need to focus on, they have always been the most oppressed. That is what she was trying to say. It wasn't about race with the Holocaust, what happened to the Jews wasn't as bad as what's happened to blacks over, over the course of uh, human history. Which is patently insane. You know, I, I don't know, I, I seem to recall reading something somewhere might have been a religious text that religious text that Jews have had it pretty hard for a very 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 long time. They say all peoples must go through some hard times. Well, we Jews are getting ours out of the way early. From here on out, it's going to be nothing but smooth sailing. And you know the uh, the thing about this whole this whole uh, this whole thing with Whoopi Goldberg, how she just got suspended from ABC for a couple of weeks, and she's super pissed about it. Um, suspended her for, for saying that the Holocaust had nothing to do with race, right? As Ben Shapiro aptly put it, that everyone's a racist except Hitler, <laughs> according to Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, you know, I used to have a soft spot in my heart for Whoopi Goldberg. I did. I, 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 really, I really did. Why? Because, well, I mean, she was the, she was the voice of the, um, the hyena on uh, The Lion King. What's on the menu? Which is... A little poetic, I guess you could say, that she voiced a hyena, <laughs> you know. Uh, and, and also because uh, we had what was the, the Looney Tunes DVD collection, the Golden Collection, you could still get it. And if you do get that um, off Amazon, can't be that much, um, what you will see is Whoopi Goldberg doing the intro to all these, uh, these cartoons when you pop the DVD in. And here's Whoopi Goldberg talking about Looney Tunes and what they are. However, the Looney Tunes and their irreverent brand of humor are products of their time. Unfortunately, at that time, racial and ethnic differences were caricatured in ways that may have embarrassed and even hurt people of color, women, and ethnic groups. Now, nobody intended it, but that's what happened. Now, some of the cartoons here reflect some of the prejudices that were commonplace in American society, especially when it came to the treatment of racial and ethnic minorities. Now, these jokes were wrong then, and they are wrong today. But removing these inexcusable images and jokes from this collection would be the same as saying they never existed. So they are presented here to accurately reflect a part of our history that cannot and should not be ignored. But I also want to point out that the Looney Tunes were made by the studio that supported hiring the first black animator, Frank Braxton, and that encouraged women voice artists like June Foray to become as recognizable as their on-screen characters. Now, obviously, that was Whoopi Goldberg uh, circa 1999, something like that, early 2000s, over 20 years ago at this point. Um, and, and, you know, obviously when she started talking about the race shit, uh, I instinctively started to cringe a little bit. But, you know, then again, you, you really can't look at the Looney Tunes of the 40s and 50s and not say that they weren't wildly, you know, offensive racially. You know, looking at the way they depicted the Japanese. I 
a Japanese a sap a man sneaking on with a do. Uh, just a Japanese a sap a man. I'm a little crazy too. It was a little bit more understandable with the Japanese, given that that occurred during World War II. They had just sacked us on Pearl Harbor, right? We were at war with them, all right? I get it. I I'm not going to point fingers back then. But, um, but you know, the way they depicted black people, too, you know, it's just... Go so high. Ridiculous, ridiculous stuff, hands down. But then she gets into the case uh, for why those cartoons needed to be preserved, right? Because if if they didn't allow, if they didn't bring those cartoons into the collection, it'd be like pretending that they never happened. We need to preserve history, which is drastically different from everything we have been hearing for the last what ten. 15 years? We need to get rid of statues, we need to get rid of books, we need to get rid of movies, songs, we need to get rid of podcasters like Joe Rogan, right? We need to disappear certain episodes of his show, as they just recently did. We need to disappear the uh, episode of Dr. Phil that had Matt, the conservative Matt Walsh on to talk about transgenderism, right? We need to get rid of all these things so that people aren't offended. Whoopi Goldberg laid it out perfectly why you need to have those things, even if they are offensive, even if they are offensive, even if they are vile, even if I don't agree with them, we still need to have those ideas. Mein Kampf, for instance, this, this was something that, that was debated uh, between me and um, uh, the two, uh, my two buddies in the military who I sat down and interviewed in an earlier episode for our D-Day special last year. This is something that they, that they were talking about. One of them thought that Mein Kampf should be sold, right? That ideas need to stand, be able to stand up to all criticism. And the other thought that, no, you really shouldn't sell that because that inspires the kid to go out and shoot a school or whatever. I don't particularly agree with that argument. I do think that all ideas should be allowed to be expressed and that they do need to be able to stand up to all forms of criticism. And I do think that we need to stop erasing history. But it is, it is remarkable just how different Whoopi Goldberg is today from 20 years ago. Now, I don't know a lot about her from 20 years ago. I'm willing to bet that she still wasn't a very good person and that she still held some rather despicable beliefs. I doubt that her IQ was much higher then than it is today. But there's no denying that she has gone off the deep end over the course of time. Why? Because, well, the reality is that Whoopi Goldberg is uh, a kind of victim a victim of leftist ideology. Rather, the, the natural progression of leftist ideology. To give you a visual example of this, look at the state of California, right? In the 1950s, 1940s, 1930s, the place was brand spanking new. It was shiny, you got the Hollywood sign, everyone wanted to go there, everyone wanted to be there. It was a beautiful state, it was a beautiful state. It, it encapsulated the American dream. Flash forward to today, this is what it looks like now. Right? Just kind of a difference, wouldn't you say? And that's relevant. That is That right there is the natural progression of leftist policies. Doesn't happen overnight, takes a little while, gets worse by worse, worse and worse and worse and worse and worse over time. Just like leftist ideology. It consumes the host and gradually drags them down into the pits of insanity where they get to the point where they can actually go out on national television and say that the Holocaust had nothing to do with race. Effectively, trying to erase that portion of history in order to prop up your own political arguments and biases and goals. That really is despicable. It really is sad to see, honest to God. And I, I won't say, I won't say that it was a uh, suspendable offense only because I believe Every business has the right to enforce or enforce its own standards as it sees fit. But the blatant hypocrisy of Disney, which owns ABC, firing Gina Carano for putting out a Holocaust uh, reference in, in one of her Facebook posts that you know basically just said we shouldn't demonize our villain, our, we shouldn't demonize our neighbors because it leads to ugly shit like it did back then. She was fired for that because it was that was anti-Semitic. Whoopi Goldberg going out there and saying that. It was just whites against whites and man's inhumanity against man. Perfectly fine. Two week suspension, no problem. 
absolutely disgusting and despicable, honest to God. Now, recently, uh, Mike Pence came out and clarified that no, he did not have the authority to withhold electoral votes in regards to uh, the 2020 election, as Donald Trump asserts. And CNN took the liberty of speaking with some Republicans to get their impression of that and Pence's stance and Pence's words. Here's that. And I heard this week that President Trump said I had the right to overturn the election. But President Trump is wrong. I had no right to overturn the election. The presidency belongs to the American people and the American people alone. We went back out to the group after the speech to see how it was received. I was pleasantly surprised uh, with how he handled it. I thought he did a great job. I, I think it's time to move on from the 2020 election and look forward to 2024. I think uh, he's made it clear, the vice president has, that he has a difference of opinion with uh, the president and the president's team over uh, what the duties of the vice president required on January 6th. Were you happy to hear him address it? Uh, well, I think he needed to address it. This is a great audience. These are constitutional scholars here, so you're speaking to a very educated group. It was very kind of them to put that little montage together for us, so I thought I'd put a little montage together of our own. I decided to sit down with a leftist and get their take on Kamala Harris's words recently. Kamala Harris, who sat down and talked about what they've been doing at the White House. Is it time? It is time for us to do what we have been doing, and that time is every day. And I thought it was important for us to get the opinion of the other people on the other side of the aisle and really get what they thought of our esteemed vice president, Madam Vice President. Here's how that went. I don't know if I was clear the first time oh, when I please, said it, sorry. so I'll be clear again this time. Okay. My gender is ah, ah, oh. And my pronouns, pronouns are I know we're all supposed to love our fellow man, but um, honestly, I don't know what the hell that was. Anyways. Now, before we wrap up today, uh, I did want to touch on the Olympics. Uh, yeah, that thing that nobody's watching, that nobody's been watching for a while. Um, some interesting stuff happening out of there. Uh, reporter was grabbed by the Chinese while reporting on the Olympics. Hey, shut down, Igor. Watch your side. It's like Simon and Bob. Yeah, we've already here in Middle East merged it all weggetrokken. Yeah. We zijn het ook al bij een ander gebied weggezet. Dus ik vrees dat wij later even bij het moeten terugkomen. Ja, dat kan maar. Ik denk ook short. Meanwhile, Nancy Pelosi has advocated to athletes to say nothing out of fear of reprisals. I would say to our athletes, you're there to compete. Do not risk incurring the anger of the Chinese government because they are ruthless. I know there is a temptation on the part of some to speak out while they are there. I respect that, but I also worry about what the Chinese government might do to their reputations, to their families. Now, uh... I gotta say, on a basic principle level, I don't disagree with what she said in the sense that it would be appropriate if I said it, right? I don't have any authority or ability to protect athletes in China from repercussions, and it probably isn't a good idea to protest in China knowing that they could throw you in a death camp. It is wildly inappropriate for somebody who has both the authority and the ability to protect those athletes to say, don't protest because we aren't going to be able to protect you. That's your job. You're Speaker of the House. You are third in line for the President. You have some freaking authority. You have some freaking ability to do something to ensure the safety of your people if they want to protest. I have to say don't protest because Nancy Pelosi won't be there to save your ass if you do. She goes out there and says it and ignores everything about her responsibilities as Speaker of the House to her country, to her people. It's patently insane. It's like it's like when Michelle Obama, right, threw out that little tweet, right, hat to to what Boko Haram hashtag Bring Back Our Girls. You're the wife to the president of the United States. I'm pretty sure that jackass had some ability to bring those girls back. Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House. I'm pretty sure that 487 year old fire breathing ghoul 
has some freaking ability to stand up for our country, has some freaking ability to stand up for the people we send over there. It's absolutely insane. Meanwhile, our enemies are mobilizing. China and Russia both put out a statement at the Olympics denouncing the West's intervention on, uh, how the hell did they put it? Let's read this real quick. Yeah, they called on the international community to respect cultural and civilizational diversity and the rights of peoples of different countries to self-determination. They stand ready to work together with all the interested partners to promote genuine democracy. Self-determination. Do the Uyghurs in China get self-determination when they have their heads shaved and sacks put over their heads and marched into death camps to be sterilized and worked to the bone? How about Ukraine? Do they, are they allowed some self-determination? Anything? 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 No? Of course not. That's, that's, it's just absolute, ugh. It's, it's just completely, complete insanity, complete evil at the end of the day. Got another axis of evil rising up on the horizon here. Meanwhile, Joe Biden is, is what? Lifting sanctions on Iran? Again? Trying to get back into the Iran nuclear deal? Right? Let's help terrorists gain nuclear capabilities. That couldn't possibly go wrong. God. But it is the world that we live in, nevertheless. Um, keep an eye out for tomorrow. Like I said, uh, Monday and Wednesdays are the days that we're going to be airing the main show here. But uh, tomorrow night I am releasing a new segment titled The Dictionary for Dickheads and Other Patriots Who Are Smart Enough to Already Know the Meanings of These Terms where each, episode, each little segment I cover the meaning of a particular phrase or topic that the left has attempted to essentially bankrupt the meaning of. First topic for tomorrow night will be masculinity, so tune in to catch that. Um, as always, I'm your host, Joshua Stanko. Saying it's, uh, it's good to be back. Um, I, I really miss doing this, and uh, I, I hope you guys enjoyed the premiere. Um, that being said, I will kick it off saying stay safe, stay informed, God bless guys, and uh, I'll catch you later. <laughs> Understandable to an extent with the way they depicted Japanese people, given that it occurred during World War II. Understandable. Still, still wildly offensive. I, I, honestly, I don't give a shit though. I mean, I just find offensive stuff funny. You know, that's just my that's just my sense of humor. Call me an asshole. Call me a racist. I guess if that's what being a racist is, is laughing at funny shit. But, um, no, we're we're actually gonna throw that in the bloopers. Um, <laughs> let me restart that. That sounded horrible. <laughs>